Hello, hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking more balance and upcoming changes once again. Um, once again the information comes directly from Wargaming, so you know that this is valid and this is stuff that is about to happen. Uh, the game in the background that you're watching is just an old Missouri game that I played I don't know how long ago, I just could never could be arsed making a commentary on it because I've covered Missouri so many times. So it will serve as a good backdrop as we discuss the other things. First things first, arms race will come back. Arms race will return. Wargaming stated that they thought the test was very successful, but uh, there's some things they want to change about the mode before they reintroduce it. First of all, they want economy integration, and that's something everyone of the player base also wants. That means you can that you'll be able to get achievements in that mode, you know, Confederate Croc and all of that stuff, and also that you can complete missions in the mode. Everyone wants it, and apparently Wargaming wants it as well, so that's one of the things they want to reintroduce before it comes back. Another thing is they want to change the way you actually get the mission, the power-ups in it and how they spawn. Uh, because right now, well, it's these kind of circles in the middle of the open sea and then you sit in a circle and you get them. And they don't think it fits the setting and I do agree it, it looks kind of silly. And apparently they want to experiment with some other methods of handing out those buffs. For example, an airdrop coming in, dropping you a buff for the package or whatever upgrade, or perhaps they'll add some ports or some other ships that you can sail close to, I don't know how they're going to do it, but ultimately they want something a bit more refined than just sail into circle, receive buff. So that's their plans when it comes to that. They also want to diversify the power-ups, they want to add more of them, like a power-up that gives you fire resistance, a power-up that gives you faster consumable cooldown, or better ship maneuverability, so they have a lot of plans for this mode and it is by no means abandoned, they just want, they just want to polish it a lot more. Speaking of polishing, they want a better spawn balance when it comes to power-ups, that's something I complained about quite a lot and that's when the enemy team gets two concealment buffs and you get two healing buffs at the start when you're playing a destroyer and you pretty much instantly lost the fight up, <laughs> lost the matchup from, from the get-go, so more balance there is obviously going to be a good thing. And finally, UI polishing, that's something, well, with the game overall I would say needs a fair bit of UI polishing, but especially for arms race, that's something they're also focusing on. And they also promised that there were more experimental game modes like that, or well, not like that, but just in general, more experimental game modes would be coming to the game, and I assume that means Wargaming will once again release a, a game mode, I don't know for how many weeks, see how peop people receive it, how people like it, and then decide if they want to add it or not. But Arms Race will be returning, which is in my opinion very, very cool. Let's move on to the different balance changes that we're about to see. First of all, let's cover the things that is coming in uh, 0.7.11. First of all, we'll see the BBAP versus DD change. Um, what Wargaming stated is that they think it's pretty silly, and I agree that right now the best way to deal with... Uh, destroyers is to always shoot AP at them. There's no incentive for battleships to ever switch ammunition, so it's and in fact it's there's incentive to use AP instead because you simply do more damage with it, which obviously means that there's almost no point ever to switch ammunition type, which kind of dumbs it down and makes it kind of silly. So this change will be coming in 0.7.11, which means you can only deal 10% of your max shell damage. There are exceptions, of course, uh, for example, the Harugumo and the Kaba, the two gunboats, uh, those things will still be eating full penetration, so there will be no change to those. Another change that will be coming in 0.7.11 is the IGN Cruiser and IGN DD changes that I covered in my last commentary. And we're, we're, we will also be seeing Rune and Hindenburg buffs coming in the upcoming, um, coming in the upcoming patch. Um, both the Rune and the Hindenburg will be gaining one additional repair party consumable, meaning they'll have one additional heal. So the idea here is of course to give them more survivability, so as long as they're played somewhat safely, um, especially in the early game, you will have much more survivability than anyone else because having an additional repair party is pretty significant, especially as both the Rune and Hindenburg has a pretty damn large health pool, so it gains a lot of benefits from these heals. Um, the damage pens, there was some testing on the PTS about torpedo bulges, torpedo 
getting raw 10% raw damage from shooting torpedo bulges, meaning if instead of uh, Wargaming attempted to fix the issue with zero damage penetrations, uh, and they tried to do it so that you would always get 10% of your shell damage in case you got this full penetration on, on a torpedo bulge or on a secondary weapon or whatever, but... The results were pretty awful on PTS. For those that watch my stream, notice that I didn't like it at all because it meant that you could shoot angled ships, you could shoot, you could pend their torpedo belt, and you could still get damage. So it made angling kind of pointless, and it made secondaries really stupidly strong since the secondaries would also score constant damage. It, it, there was a, there was a lot of issues with it, and Wargaming also agreed that it was completely awful, and they're actually not going to be introducing that one. So that that the fixing zero damage penetrations is still a work in progress for them speaking of secondaries though the all ap secondaries will switch from uh, from ap to he in 0.7.11 um, the thing is they want secondaries to be more viable but they also don't want them to be OP. So there's there's a chance that they, they might have to rebalance some of these things. The issue, of course, with AP secondaries is that uh, the secondaries by default always aim for the Citadel. Um, whereas for a very light cruiser giving you full broadside, that means you might occasionally get a Citadel with your secondaries. Most of the time, it means that your secondaries will be shooting that armored belt and they will be bouncing or shattering, or if the battleship or whatever ship is pushing nose in towards you, your, your small little AP secondaries will just be hitting the nose and they will be bouncing. So in general, AP secondaries deal almost no damage at all, and Wargaming will attempt to address this by switching all AP to HE. These are the changes that is coming in 0.7.11, but there's a lot more balancing changes in the future, and we shall move on to them right away. Now, some of the following things are absolutely still works in progress, but they did explain what their plan was. Basically, the issue is they want to adjust the radar. A, lot of, a huge part of the community hates the current version of the radar, and Wargaming is very much aware of this, and they want to adjust it. They want to adjust the meta, but they also don't want to nerf radar into the ground, because, well, a lot of ships rely on it for balancing and, in general, utility. They tried some uh, popular community ideas like line of sight checks or potential dispersion penalty. Uh, they tried both of those suggestions uh, internally and apparently both of those uh, suggestions failed really hard. So they have a new work in progress solution for how to deal with radar and that is delayed spotting for teammates. What it means is if you radar a destroyer, the, the only one who will spot that destroyer instantly is you. Your teammates will spot him much delayed, meaning that the guy who gets radared gets additional warning time before the entire team can just pile, on, pile in on him and only you can really deal damage to him in the beginning. So the idea is to um, balance radar so that the, that one guy doesn't get completely basically gangbanged, uh, whereas it wouldn't affect the individual player. So the guy who's radaring, he can still use the radar to its full potential, but the destroyer who's being radared doesn't get brutalized as hard by the radar itself. And I think this concept might actually work quite well. I think they're on to something, and I think it has potential. So I'm actually looking forward to how they will implement this solution, because it has potential, in my opinion. It might be a very good solution. Moving on... Something that a lot of battleship players would probably like to hear. Wargaming thinks that a lot of battleships need buffs. Now, I don't agree with all of this, but ultimately this is of course Wargaming's opinion and their call. They think that the entire American line, all the way from tier 3, all the way to tier 9, needs buffs. Now, I don't agree with all of this. For example, I agree that tier 3 is pretty damn terrible these days, South Carolina, it's gotten so power crypt. The tier 5, the New York, also gotten power crypt, absolutely could use some love. The New Mexico, yeah, could probably use a bit of love there. Colorado, maybe. But then when we get to, for example, the Wyoming, I don't really see the need for buffs on this thing. It has a terrifying broadside for tier 4. I also don't see any need for buffs for the, uh, North Carolina. I think it's probably one of the best tier 8 battleships in the entire game. Like, fantastic AA, fantastic guns, uh, fantastic concealment. Like, that thing has it all going for it. So, I'm a bit worried about how what exactly they're planning on do on that end. 
And then we have, a, have of course, the Ayava, which are also considered to be great. They didn't mention the Montana. No, actually, they did mention the Montana. They said uh, they think the Montana is in a perfectly good spot and it's not about to uh, get any changes. But, pretty, but they are planning on changing the entire American line. Some, New York, absolutely yes. Others, North Carolina, eh, I'm not really sure how I feel about that one. Other battleships that they will be looking at is the Mayogi. Well, thank God, that thing is in a pretty terrible state. Izumo is gonna get even more buffs. They already buffed the deck armor to 57mm to make it less vulnerable to HE, but apparently it's gonna get buffed even more. And something I think we can all agree on, which is much needed, and that's Friedrich der Große will be also buffed. And, I mean, anyone who's played the Friedrich der Große knows that that thing is really not a fun experience, and that's absolutely a ship buff that I can fully endorse and agree with. That thing needs to be improved. Also, speaking of battleships, they are also planning on changing the flooding mechanics. They are planning on making a rework for it, make it more manageable, less one-dimensional, basically. You have a flooding, you the damage con, that's the end of it. They are they're exploring some options on how to change the current flooding, because, well, I agree, it's pretty simple at this point. Uh, you get a flooding, you have to for you're forced to damage con, there's really no options, and then you usually get piled on with HE, so they are looking for ways to change uh, this entire mechanic around. I'm not really sure what they're planning, are yet this is pro probably still pretty early work in progress but it is absolutely on their radar and in their plans which is of course pretty exciting moving on there's some exciting information for the cruisers out there who know how to angle they are planning on reinforcing the middle sections of cruiser plating which means basically that if you angle well you will be better rewarded. Probably less of that overmatch on the upper belt, I assume, is the plan. And overall, they want to reward cruiser players who know how to angle so that they don't eat these massive pens at, at, at stupid angles. And I agree, this is fantastic. They did mention they're not gonna change pretty much any, any other part of the armor, it's just the middle part. And the idea is to reward skillful maneuvering. And I can absolutely agree with this, which is this will probably be a pretty comfortable uh, cruiser buff, which might be needed because they're gonna be changing a lot when it comes to heavy versus light cruisers. They want to make these two types more distinguishable, distinguishable in terms of HE pen. The plan is that heavy cruisers will be able to penetrate their own battle tier. I don't know exactly what they mean in that with their own battle tier doesn't mean it, it will only be able to penetrate like bows and sterns of same tier battleships. Or does it mean that they, they will also be able to pen uh, the deck armor, like 50 or 38 millimeter? Uh, they didn't give details on that one, but the potential is pretty interesting. On the other hand, light cruisers won't penetrate battleship plating and won't penetrate plating of higher tier cruisers either. Which obviously means, they also mentioned that IFHE will be less mandatory, mandatory and more of a trade-off. Now the only way you can make, if the only way you can nerf uh, light cruiser penetration and make IFHE less mandatory is by also nerfing IFHE. Well, I mentioned a long time ago that I thought IFHE was one of the worst additions to the game because, well, it kind of dumped down every single light cruiser build into spec IFHE and then just pen everything with HE and there was very little difference between heavy and light cruisers and all of that. So, I, I actually kind of agree with this, but the question will of course be how will they balance it? Because uh, as of now, the game has for a long time been balanced around the fact that you spec into IFHE. Like, some ships are heavily, heavily dependent on having IFHE to deal raw damage. And in fact, many light cruisers are very dependent on being able to deal that raw damage because, well, if, if you take away the pen, uh, the light AP is pretty useless most of the time and you rely on that light HE with the IFHE to get your damage in. So I'm not sure how they will be balancing this, but that's their plan. Heavy cruisers will penetrate any plating on their battle tier. It says any plating on their battle tier. So that's, does that really mean that you'll be able to penetrate like 50mm plus on the battleships as well? That's, that seems pretty crazy. I'm looking forward to the details on this thing. And by the way, uh, looking at what we're shooting at right now, there's another thing I need to mention. Conquer Citadel will be raised. They finally decided that, well, 
The Conqueror is a bit too stupid in the way that it can give you broadside and never ever pretty much get Citadel. So Wargaming will be adjusting the height of the Citadel. They won't be touching the HE, they won't be touching the heal, the concealment or whatever. So obviously the ship is still very survivable. But if you give full broadside, you will be able to get punished with Citadels. And this is of course fantastic news because just like uh, with the cruiser plating, uh, this is something that will favor the good players. The players who know how to angle, the players who know, to know not to sail around full broadside the entire time, well, they, they probably won't notice any difference. But the potatoes that park full broadside in front of you and just shoot at you, at you all day, well, now, you're act now you'll actually be able to citadel them and punish them quite heavily, which is something, I, well, how heavily remains to be seen. I mean, it might be just a very minimal citadel race, just like kind of what the Montana has, maybe. Um, regardless, though, I'm very much looking forward to this change because I think it's been a long time coming. Um, the Conqueror has had its incredibly dumbed down playstyle stick around for such a long time. No, it's not a particularly strong ship in competitive, but it's the dumbness of the playstyle that has always irked me. You shoot HE at everything and you sail around full broadside and you never get punished. Like, it's, it was a stupid playstyle, and it looks like Wargaming is finally doing something about it. So I'm very, very, very happy to see that. And more importantly, good players will still be absolute monsters because they know not to give that full broadside. I'm trying to turn to shoot my back turrets and finish this guy off. Sadly, I don't get the damage I wanted to finish him off, and my carrier does not strafe the strike. So this Missouri a, a game that we've been watching in the background will end in my death to the carrier. If you guys are interested in seeing how this game ended, since you, well, you basically watched the entire thing as I've been talking, um, here is the rewards. Mighty Mo, aka Missouri, is of course the king of making credits in this game. That hasn't changed, unlikely to change in the future, although there was, there were some talk about them wanting to change the way people earn money, but uh, they didn't give enough details for me to re really get into that. So we'll have to wait until a later moment to delve into those. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this coming soon balance changes uh, preview, because all of this stuff is straight from Wargaming's mouth. So all of this stuff should be pretty exciting. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for tuning in and have a great one.